Back with you, hour number three of the Saturday Sports Report, Fox Sports 1498-3 FM. Want to say thanks to Coach Stephen Fasaro, head baseball coach of the Chapman Panthers, and Tom Luganbill of ESPN for joining us this morning on the program. And we bring in our third guest of the program, Derek Scott, voice of the Gamecocks. Derek, how are you this morning, man? Great, man. How about yourself? We are doing well. We appreciate you joining us. Uh, After South Carolina baseball gets their first series win in over a year, so you wake up on Saturday morning, Derek, and uh, the Gamecocks have found a way to to beat Tennessee 2-3. or Talk about these first two games against uh, the Volunteers for the Gamecocks. All right, well, first off, first SEC series win in over a yes. year. It's not like we haven't won a series. That's right. <laughs> no, let's make, let's make this worse than it is. <laughs> first uh, SEC but, but nonetheless, series win. Nonetheless, it's just always good to wake up on the morning of the third game of the series and know you've already got the series clinched, yep. and now you just want to get greedy and go for a sweep. 6-2 um, to two last night, 6-1 to one the first night. Starting pitching has been really, really good. Adam Hill and Cody Morris have combined to work 11 innings and allow only one run. Uh, and the bats have been solid, if not spectacular. You've had some big contributions from uh, guys like Carlos Cortez, who's really scuffled this season compared to what we expected from Carlos. But he had a three-hit night last night, including a home run. He's been on base, I think, five times uh, this weekend. And um, with the absences of the first three hitters in the lineup right now due to injury, you've got to have some fellas you know, get hot and, and fill that void because it's a big void to fill when you don't have T.J. Hopkins, you don't have Madison Stokes, and you don't have Noah Campbell, who are all injured right now. Derek, we've heard so much this season, with it being Mark Kingston's first year, about the mentality of the Gamecocks just isn't the same as it was when Ray Tanner was there. And I have been asked that several times on different shows and stuff like that, but Derek, I really can't put a, a pin on it. What do you think, in your opinion, is different than this team? Uh, and is there some part of Chad Holbrook's team that still is with this team that they need to shed away? Well, I mean, most of these guys are Chad Holbrook's recruits, but I don't think that's some sort of scarlet letter you put on the kids. I, I think right. whatever you aren't winning as much as you like, fans look for reasons. And no one ever just likes to say they're not playing well enough. They want to come up with all this other stuff. And I was telling some yep. guys on the flagship station here in Columbia yesterday that I've never heard Adrian Morales, as much as I loved Adrian, made out to be more of this magical figure. Everyone wants to point back to guys like him from 2010 and 11 and say, well, the leadership they brought – and, 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 you know, you talk to, to, to Coach Kingston or any other coach, they'll tell you in a heartbeat, I'd rather have great players than great leaders. But if you can't have somebody who's a great player, then find some other way to contribute. But, but at the same time, I, just, I think some of that stuff gets overplayed. I think the bottom line is guys just haven't hit well enough, pitched well enough, whatever the, the case is, it still comes down to production. I mean, no better proof of that than this weekend because Tennessee came in with a better record than South Carolina, but if you watch them play head to head, there's no comparison. The Gamecocks are a better baseball team, even missing the guys they're missing. Uh, and now you look in hindsight about that loss last week, the sweep of Georgia. Well, Georgia's won't really won a series against Texas A&M. So, you know, I think you find out pretty quickly teams might be better than you gave them credit for when you played them. Uh, and the other side of that is this bunch just hasn't been able to to do it well enough when they've needed to. They've been obviously close a lot. Uh, those one-run losses in the Florida series, I mean, you're you're an unearned run away from winning a series against the number two team in the country a couple weeks back, so you can't, you know, undersell that. But, no, this, this team's just battled a lot of injuries and really just haven't put it all together when they've needed to, to to get some wins that they should have had, especially midweek wins here early in the year. You, you don't like to have those losses to the Citadel and Furman and Charleston Southern. It's one thing, everybody's going to have one or two of those. But when you, they start stacking up a little bit, that's when it impacts how your overall record looks, and that's why the squad's sitting at 16 and 11 instead of, you know, maybe 19 and 8, where people wouldn't be nearly as apt to be hitting the panic button right now. Derek, 16 and 11 right now. When you look at the rest of the schedule for the Gamecocks, it is absolutely brutal. In your opinion, <laughs> what is South Carolina going to have to do in order to make the tournament, to make the postseason this year? Well, well, you know, it's interesting. You've got, well, first off, you've got to win some series. You've got to win more of these. Right. Uh, and, and you can't just rely on the home wins. You've got to go find a, a road series win in there somewhere. And in the next month, they'll certainly have their chances to do that because three of the next four weeks are on the road. But three of the next four weeks are also on the road against ranked teams. I mean, all four of the next series are teams that are in the top 25 right now at Kentucky, at Arkansas, home with LSU, and at Vanderbilt. It's, it's a ridiculous stretch, but this league right now has just got – you know, very few holes 
in it as far as finding a, a weekend where you feel like you can you can breathe a little bit. And unfortunately, we don't play Alabama this year <laughs> because they're probably the worst team in the league. But uh, you, you've got it's just that simple. You got to go find a way to play well enough on the road to win some games, uh, and and they'll turn that into some series wins because I don't think going one and two a bunch, even against really good teams, you know, you're going to get that one SEC win a week. I don't think that's enough to impress the uh, uh, selection committee enough to, to move you into that, you know, on the right side of the, the bubble. But obviously, hey, it's still still March right now, at least for a day. Um, yeah, there's a whole lot of baseball. There's still, you know, seven mm-hmm. series after this weekend. So a lot can change in terms of how the landscape looks around college baseball and, and, and certainly – around this team. I think right now they just like to get some good news on the injury front, start getting guys back instead of losing more guys. Uh, we're going to go to the ballpark today and find out if Justin Rowe can play. He uh, took a, a pretty ugly collision on a slide in the second last night and hurt his knee and had to leave the game. And Gamecocks certainly don't need to lose another you know contributor right now, especially one that plays middle infield where they're already down Stokes and Campbell. Derek Scott, voice of the Gamecocks, joining us on the Saturday Sports Report. Derek, what is your opinion behind the uh, hitting law for Jacob Olsen and Carlos Cortez, who both are uh, hitting below 250 right now and really hadn't found their uh, stride yet this season? Yeah, you know, Jacob, he led this team in batting average last year. And um, and so you expected big things from him. And where the power numbers are there, I mean, he leads this team in home runs, hit another one last night. Um, but the average just isn't. It's still below 200, if I'm not mistaken, yep. and that's crazy. Um, and, and, I mean, I know I talk to Tommy Moody every night on the radio. Tommy's got his theory as far as where Jacob is in the batter's box, that he's too far away from the plate. He can't do anything with the pitch on the outside corner. Um, but, you know, it's not like, you know, we're the hitting coaches, and I know the coaches have seen the same things and have asked you know him to try and make that adjustment, and he just doesn't seem comfortable changing where he is in the batter's box. I'm not saying that's the answer, but that's certainly the first thing we notice night to night is the number of pitches he cannot get to to protect the outside corner of the plate. As far as Carlos, you know, he's pulled off the ball some, um, but he also was a slow starter last year. He really didn't get it cranked up last season until I want to say week three or week four of conference play. Um, So I'm hoping that maybe what we saw last night is a sign of things moving in the right direction for him. Um, because he's another guy, much like where Jacob, you said where the power numbers are still there. It's not as if he's contributing nothing. It's just not hitting for average. Carlos is the same way. His batting average, even with three hits last night, probably still, if it's over 200, not by much, but he has a very good on-base percentage because he drew a lot of walks early in the year when folks were pitching so carefully to him. So still contributing some things. Uh, Carlos also, both of those guys really, have been real, real good in the outfield this year, and that's been a bit of a surprise with Carlos because he struggled a little bit out there at times last year and he's just been tremendous he made a uh, a basket catch last night on a ball hit down the line a juggling basket catch that was phenomenal and uh, so they're still finding ways to contribute but certainly you thought coming into the year those are going to be two of the bigger pieces for you offensively uh, in terms of you know routinely being on base and hitting the ball hard producing runs and it, it hasn't quite materialized as of yet the way you thought. Derek Scott, we appreciate your time. Great stuff as always, and we look forward to talking to you soon. All right, 145 airtime today for us, folks. And uh, one of your local guys, Rich Chapman from Taylor's, South Carolina, and Spartanburg Spartanburg, uh, Methodist will be on the mound for the Gamecock. Thanks so much, Derek. We'll have that game for you right here on 98.3. Thanks, and uh, good luck on the call. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.